Welcome and greetings, career-minded superstars. You are listening to the exclusive Career Coach, your podcast for all things career. And I'm Lisa Edwards, the indispensable career coach for superstars just like you. Now let's dig into this week's topic, shall we? Go from dragging yourself to work each day to finding a job you love. The Career Spring program is for high achieving and ambitious mid level professionals like you who are looking for a job that uses your zone of genius, recognizes your value, and pays you what you're worth. If you're ready to learn more, schedule a complimentary consult using the link to my calendar in the show notes. Be sure to follow me on Exclusive Career Coaching on Facebook. Lisa Edwards on LinkedIn and Lisa.Edwards on Instagram. Greetings. Happy end of May, guys. I hope you have fantastic summer plans planned. I do. I just made some plans to head out of the country and pretty stoked about it. So, but I'll make sure to record ahead of time so you don't miss an episode. I want to tell you today before I get into today's topic about the new program that I have created. It's a one-on-one coaching program called Highly Promotable. If you're on my mailing list and getting that weekly information from me and tips and strategies and all of the things, a link to that week's podcast, then you maybe saw a few weeks ago when I started talking about Highly Promotable. It is different from the regular, if you will, coaching that I do. So if I kind of pull the lens out a little bit, the inner circle of my business are folks in job transition. And so I'm both providing the marketing documents, resume, cover letter, LinkedIn profile, whatever else they may need in that regard, as well as any coaching that they need to help them lay on their job. So job search strategy, how to interview, how to salary negotiate, how to network, all the things. The second rung of my business, which is growing by leaps and bounds, is career coaching. So folks who are not looking to change jobs any time soon. That is not their primary purpose for reaching out to me, but they want to work with a career coach on an issue that they're dealing with at work. So for example, recently I've worked with clients who are dealing with one client moved up into her first supervisory role and she's dealing with politics at her organization in a way that she never had to before. Another client that I worked with recently who was managing a very, and actually a billion dollar project He was managing this, but he wasn't getting good feedback from his boss and from his reports on how he was leading his team and he needed to work on on that. Had another client who was put into an executive role as a woman in a male-dominated company and industry and was struggling to show up as her authentic self within this male, you know, a lot of male expectations, a lot of male behaviors that were assumed to be the right, quote unquote, right behaviors and her female behaviors and responses were considered, quote unquote, wrong. So those are just a few examples of that. Well, in that vein, so that that coaching is folks who, when people come to me and they say, here's the issue, I want to deal with this, or I want to be more this or less this, then we can do that coaching. Highly Promotable is a much more structured coaching program specifically for folks who want to get into the C-suite. Now, the C-suite for these people is not the next step. It may not even be the next two steps, but they know where they want to end up and they want to begin positioning themselves sooner rather than later. So these are people who ideally maybe they've just wrapped up an MBA or they've, you know, moved into a true managerial position where at least half of their time is being spent managing the work of others. And so they they can see that path to the C-suite, but perhaps they personally believe that something in their professional life is getting in the way of them being highly promotable. Perhaps they've gotten that feedback through a, a boss, through a performance evaluation, maybe through a 360 and they've been told this is something they need to work on, or they've just been presented that and they know they need to work on that in order to 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 advance. So 
So this program will start with a 360 assessment. And I've, I've found a one that I'm in love with. It is fantastic for giving you really good details. So the idea is we start with that. We send it out to the people. We get the information back. And the client and I then sit down together and look at what is this telling us about you? And we identify at least one area that is coming out as a strength that we want to leverage as a signature strength for you. So we will spend six months working together to leverage that strength and maybe more than one and getting really particular with assignments at work, conversations to have, people to meet, resources to read or listen to. So you're going to have homework every time. We'll be meeting one-on-one -on -one via Zoom every other week, but you will have some homework in between each session. The other piece of it is, what is the 360 saying about areas for growth? Now, I'm not interested in trying to take your worst you know, weakness, if you will, and turning it into something other than a weakness, because I think we all have them and we should have weaknesses. But where is something that is got potential and if we can improve that area, it's going to vastly move the needle for you in terms of this promotability. What is it that we're seeing in this assessment that we think we can really make some traction with? So the sessions, as I said, one hour every other week, homework in between. We'll have a 90-minute start session, a 90-minute ending session. All the other sessions will be 60 minutes interspersed in there. We're going to have certain kind of customized sessions. So maybe you need a session on how to leverage LinkedIn for whatever your career goals are. Maybe you need a session on, maybe we need to go depth in-depth on networking and how to do that correctly in the best way that serves you. So whatever it is that we need kind of special sessions, we'll intersperse those in as well. In addition, you'll have three SOS calls, which are 20 minute, I need help. And, and you're going to have access to my calendar for, you know, kind of ASAP meetings. And this could be, you know, I've got to go in and give this presentation and we've been working on my presentation skills, but I'm freaking out right now. I just need you to, you know, let's talk through a few things, whatever it may be, but you're going to have those three SOS calls. And then after the session is over, after all the coaching is over, you still get a session with me at 45 days and at six months to see how you're coming along with the things that we've worked on. And we are going to do a post assessment as well. So you'll be able to see the growth that you that you've had on these things that we've been working on. So hopefully that explains how much more structured highly promotable is than my other coaching. Neither is right and neither is wrong, but they are for two different kind of people with different needs, if you will. And if you are interested in scheduling an introductory call for Highly Promotable, you can see the link in the show notes. So, so grab that. And of course, always in the show notes is the link to my calendar for a regular call for the other services that I provide. All right, enough about that. I hope that's given you the, the skinny. Today, we're talking about how to develop a list of target employers. So many people are job searching right now. The market is in such a strange place. I wanted to do a deep dive on this particular aspect of the job search. So let me set the stage first of all. When it comes to networking, most of you engage in what I call the Tommy gun approach. That's also been referred to as the spray and pray method. Tell everybody that you're looking for a job and you usually use some language around, if you think of anything, let me know. It's kind of like throwing jello on the wall and hoping it sticks. There's nothing really there that you're giving this other person to help them help you. I can't tell you how many times in my career someone has said that very, used that very language with me. And then two or three weeks later, a job comes across my desk. I can't remember who said that thing to me. I don't know if this job is a good fit for that person because I don't remember who it was or what they were looking for. And so I just, you know, keep on with my day and don't do anything about it. I want to teach you what I call the bow and arrow approach, which is much more targeted. So sure, spray and pray, you know, if you have the opportunity and you're out and you want to just tell everybody, but let's also add to our strategy a much more pinpointed strategic approach, which I call the bow and arrow. And I always think of this for some reason as the Wizard of Oz. So the wizard in this case is the eventual decision maker of a company 
that you want to work for. So let's just call it ABC company. And I'm going to talk about how to determine who these target companies should be. But let's say you've identified ABC company as one of your target employers. The wizard then is the decision maker. So if you need to, if you're hiring, decision maker would be the VP of finance or the VP of marketing, VP of sales, whatever, then you have access through LinkedIn and or the company website to find out what that person's name is. And then what you're doing is working backwards from that decision maker to see how do I get my foot in the door at that company. And you're going to be setting up strategic meetings with people that can get you successively closer, right? So you're starting at the beginning on the yellow brick road. You want to find, okay, who's the next person that can get me in the door? And then I want to know, I want to get a little closer and a little closer. I call them successive approximations. Now, as I've stated, this approach has to start with you knowing where you want to work. And I've talked in previous episodes about how to profile your ideal employer, and I've gone into depth, and that's something that I do with my clients on the regular basis. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here other than to say it is very important that you know what you're looking for in your ideal employer, because otherwise... How are you going to know when you find it? You know, it's like people who have no, have not articulated for themselves what they want in an ideal mate. And yet they're out there trying to find that ideal mate and are wondering why they're not having success. So it really works in any area of your life. If you don't know what you're looking for, how will you know where to find it? How will you know that you found it? It's, you're creating a lot of unnecessary heartache and pain for yourself. So what are some of the things that might be important to you in a company? It could be the location. So let's say it is a company that you would be on site with. You know, is this a place that you would want to live geographically? If it's in your town that you live in now, what about the commute? I've worked with a lot of clients over the years who live in Toronto. And they, although I've never been to Toronto, I've never been to Canada, they tell me very clearly that you could have a tremendous commute even with living in Toronto and working in Toronto, if the company is on, you know, the opposite side of Toronto from you. So looking at at things like the commute. Also, the size of the company, depending on the work that you do, I have many clients who the the field that they're in, they sort of want to move to the next level in terms of size. And that could include number of employees, revenue, you know, all of those kinds of things because they want to move up kind of up a level, if you will. It could also be, and for many of you, will be the product or service. So especially if you're in sales or marketing, do you support this product? Do you like the way they make the product, the way that they, you know, the quality of the product or service? What about the mission of the company? What about the reputation of the company? What about the culture of the company? So these are broad categories that I would then want you to drill down and say, okay, here's what I'm looking for. Mission is important to me, and here's what I want to see. And and there's many other possibles. You know, you're not likely to find a company that's going to meet every single thing you're looking for. So what you're doing in this process is coming up with maybe three to five things that are most important. I call them your non-negotiables. And everything else is, I call them the gee, wouldn't it be nice, right? If they are gravy. And I remember back when I was moving from Columbus, Georgia and looking for a new job, one of my gee, wouldn't it be nices is to have windows in my office. And the reason it was a gee, wouldn't it be nice is that my office at Columbus State University was in the bottom level of the student union building, which was the fallout shelter for the building. And so we had no windows. Our building was the the bottom. I think the whole building was concrete block, no windows, literally had been in the office and there was a major storm outside. And we didn't know it until we walked out of our suite to go across the hall to the restroom. And then there was a set of double doors going outside right there with glass on them. And we could see that there was gnarly weather out there, but we couldn't tell in our little bomb shelter. So that was a gee, wouldn't it be nice for me? And by the way, I did get lovely windows in my new office and the whole suite was just very full of light and and windows. It was great. But that was not a non-negotiable. I was not going to not go to a university or to a a job offer just because it didn't have windows. So some of my non-negotiables, there was some geography. So even though I was open to looking all over the country and had had conversations 
from California to Buffalo, New York, I think that's pretty much across the country, there were certain parts of the country that I had no interest in living in. I didn't want to go to a smaller school. And so there were some things like that that were non-negotiable for me. Once you've identified your non-negotiables, the next step is for you to create a list of about 25 employers that might meet that criteria. So what do I mean? Might is after a cursory glance or based on what I already know about the company, they're a possibility. So for example, let's go back, let's go back to my example and let's say that for you, maybe you've got a health condition and well, let's not use that. Let's use an example of size of the company. All right. Size. I want the company to be, let's say you want a startup and you want it to have fewer than 200 employees. And that's really important to you. That's a non-negotiable big deal for you. So you could do very quick research on a company. And maybe if the company has 300 employees, you put them on that initial list to see what else they have going for them or against them in your eyes. But if they have 5,000 employees and you said you want it to be about 200, probably not. So you have that kind of cursory glance of who might you know, might be a good fit, who is definitely not a good fit. And again, you want to come up with about 25 companies that can be on your initial list. Now, how do you come up with this list? So there's top of mind. Here are companies that I've always known because I'm in the industry. I have, you know, I have just knowledge, just top of mind knowledge about that company in, in a positive way. It could be where your friends or family works. I've had three coworkers who've gone to work for ABC Company and they all rave about how great it is to work there. In the news, for I put in parentheses for positive reasons, right? Because you could be in the news for some really bad reasons. But are you seeing positive signs of growth, signs of maybe being creative and innovative and those kind of things, whatever's important to you? It could also be your competitors, right? So you've worked for CD, DEF company and you'd like to, you know, talk to ABC and GHI companies, right? The, the, they're in the same industry. What does the Chamber of Commerce directory have to say? So this is particularly if you are looking in a certain geographic region, go to the Chamber of Commerce online directory. You're going to have access to it. It's a service that they provide their members to, you know, try to increase their business. So that's going to be available to you even if you're not a Chamber member. And the Chamber tends to be a pretty exhaustive list of, of all the people, all the companies. Google, right? So companies that sell blank companies, you know, blank, whatever you want to, however you want to do a Google search. And then who's in hiring mode? And you can check sources like LinkedIn. Now, to be clear, we are not talking about a reactive job search here where you are applying to jobs that are online. We are talking about you approaching and having conversations with decision makers at companies that you believe, based on your research, you would be an ideal fit for, and they would be an ideal fit for you. So when I'm saying who's in hiring mode, what I'm saying is what that tells you about that company. So I'm not interested in you saying, oh, look, they have the perfect job for me. I'm going to go apply, although you may choose to do that. Nor am I suggesting that if they don't have a job posted for you, that you shouldn't put them on your list. I absolutely want them on your list. This these companies that are in hiring mode tells you that there's something, something's going on, may not be good, put a pin in that, but it could be a new, a new product that they're, a new line they're carrying, a new initiative, an acquisition, who knows what it could be. It could also be huge turnover because nobody stays there very long, right? So having a lot of hiring going on, you want to look at things like Glassdoor and see what are people saying about that company and can you kind of put two and two together and make some assumptions. So once you've created this initial list of about 25 employers, now you want to do some more in-depth research to narrow your list down to about 10 to 12 ideal employers. And I, I'm going to say 15 to 30 minutes per company is really all you need to do. And you want to create some kind of a system such as an Excel spreadsheet. I have actually a form that I give out to my clients that they can evaluate potential employers because you're wanting to be objective and not subjective about this. If you've said 
A, B, and C are the three most important things to me in a company. You want to make sure that you are measuring those things and you aren't letting shiny objects over here that have nothing to do with A, B, and C affect your judgment about whether they have those non-negotiables that you're looking for. So I recommend that you create a rating system. So you've got these three to five things, non-negotiables, right? We know what they are. We've identified them. We know what we're looking for. Now, how do we want to evaluate these companies? Do we simply want to do it on a scale of one to five? So if we've said commute, big deal to me, huge deal. You know, does do we want to quantify that and say they get a five if the commute is less than 20 minutes? They get a three if the commute is less than 45 minutes, like whatever. It's up to you. There's no right or wrong. It's just, it's simply a matter of having criteria and being objective rather than subjective about it. Your next step then, so now you've evaluated all these companies on what you said was important to you. Then you want to kind of see, reorder your list, your 10 to 12 companies by these scores that you've given them, right? So you add up your scores, whatever your your rating system was, you know, reorder the companies first to 12, let's say. Then I recommend that you create tiers within those 10 to 12 companies. So one way to do this is kind of where do I see when I'm, I look at the total score that I've given these companies, where are the natural breaks where it kind of drops a fair amount? And so typically I like to have three tiers, top tier, middle tier, bottom tier. The other way to do it is I've got 12 companies, the top four, the middle four and the bottom four. It doesn't matter. Again, you get to decide. And you get to decide how you will approach each tier. I'm going to give you an idea, but you get to decide. The idea with these tiers is that even though these are all target employers, you don't have to go at all of them with full force. That's a lot for 12 companies. And it's especially a lot if you're already working full time. So we want to break this down and make it a little bit more manageable for you. One way to handle this is you might choose to find, let's say, three contacts who are connected to each of your top tier employers and try to set up face-to-face meetings. So that's your top tier. I'm going to find three people that I know or that I can get to know relative to each of these companies and the decision maker. And my goal is to meet in person with, let's say, at least two of the three of them. Maybe your second tier, you decide I'm going to find one contact for each of these companies and I'm going to try to reach out to them and schedule a meeting. And then maybe for my third tier, I'm just going to keep an eye on these companies. I am going to look at their website to see if they have a job opening for which I'm qualified for. So I will do that. And then I'm going to also look for what the what I'm seeing in the news about these companies. Do I then want to move that company based on what I learn up into tier two? Do I want to move it off my list because something negative has come up about them? And that point is that you can move this list around. So however it starts out in terms of 1 to 12 is not how it's going to end up. It is a living document. And as you learn things, as you get headway with some companies and start to have feelings about those companies and not headway with other companies and have feelings about that, you can then start to reorder your list. With at least your top tier, you then want to figure out how to get your foot in the door with each company. So one of the things that I do with my clients is what's called a quadrants exercise. And so we identify a company. So here we are, ABC company. And we've identified based on our research that the decision maker, the person who could offer us a job is Bob Smith. And then what we want to do is look for how we can get our foot in the door and get get towards Bob. So step one is, who do we know that works at ABC Company and knows Bob Smith? We're going to see that on LinkedIn. At least they're connected. Maybe they don't know each other real well, but they're connected on LinkedIn. If we don't have somebody like that, then do we know someone who is either working at ABC Company or connected to Bob Smith? And then the final quadrant is the are the folks who are, I call them centers of influence. So these people do not work at ABC Company. They do not appear to know Bob Smith, but they are very well connected. And they could be very well connected geographically. 
So you're trying to find a job in Chicago, and this is somebody who just seems to know everybody in Chicago. Maybe you're in a certain industry, and so it's not so much geographic connection. You want someone who's very well connected in consumer products goods, or it could be in your field, right? So you're an accountant. You want to find somebody who's just very well connected with accountants. This is where you then begin speaking with people. And I want you to remember, because some people find the whole idea of networking to be distasteful, until you get a chance to talk to Bob Smith, you are not asking anyone for a job. You are asking them for an introduction, referrals, leads. You're going to have a specific ask for them. So you you identify, let's just say with our ABC company, you realize that a woman that you worked with several years ago at a company is now employed at ABC company. Now, you haven't talked to her in seven years, so the first thought your brain is going to have is, oh my gosh, you can't you can't possibly reach out to somebody that you haven't talked to in seven years. They'll, they'll think you're, you know, whatever you might think that they think, and we don't care. We don't care what they think about us because we're going to reach out anyway. You're going to have then a specific ask. So you find this person, her name is Sue, you haven't talked to her in seven years, and you see that Sue is connected to someone in the department you want to work in at ABC Company. That's your ask. And you're going to have a very specific ask, and that's for two reasons. A, you're giving Sue a very concrete way to help you because you're not giving her that general, if you think of anything, let me know. Will you introduce me to so-and-so? Secondly, it gives you something concrete to follow up with Sue on within 24 hours of your meeting. Now, I've talked about in other sessions and other episodes about how to work that networking meeting and how to give that equal exchange of energy. So I'm not going into that today. This one's running longer than most of them do anyway. So I'm going to leave you with that. But what I do want to kind of reiterate is have a specific ask. Now, that other person may say, you know, I don't know that person very well, but I know so-and-so very well. And -and so-and-so is going to meet your needs just as well. So there's that balance. I have an agenda. I have an ask, but I'm open to serendipity and whatever else this other person may have for me that, that makes sense. All right. Hope this has been helpful on how to develop a target list of employers so that you can have a targeted, proactive job search strategy and you're not just reacting to job postings. So I hope this has been helpful and I'll see you next week. Take care. You've been listening to the Exclusive Career Coach with Lisa Edwards, CEO of Exclusive Career Coaching. It would be great if you would rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. Also, I want to be your career coach, so be sure to ask questions about your career management challenges and job search situation. Until next time.